Hey everybody, welcome back to Maker's Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name's Alicia, a craft producer here at Maker's Gonna Learn, and today I'm gonna be showing you all everything you need to know about polymer clay earrings. So there are many different types of clay that you all can use to actually make your polymer clay earrings. Um, we tested out a few different kinds. We found that the kits that you can order off Amazon with the clay weren't as high quality as using something such as the Sculpey clay. So this is the Sculpey 3 Crafty clay. Um, this is probably like my second placer. The best Sculpey clay that you can use is the Sculpey Souffle. Um, it just works better for earring making. It's a little bit easier to kind of work with. Um, but this will get the job done, and these turned out beautifully whenever I use these. So today we're going to actually use just the Sculpey 3 to make our earrings. Um, but it is good to pay attention to what types of clay you're buying. You'll notice they have different textures. Um, after they're baked, they feel a little bit different. Some of them can even break easier than others. So it may be good for you to test out different types of clay and see what works best for you. The Sculpey brand is amazing, like tried and true. So we can guarantee that. Um, but if you are wanting to try a different type, go for it. Try different things out and see what's gonna work best for you. You're also gonna need jewelry making supplies. So what I've got here is a set of needle nose pliers. You're gonna need these for sure if you're gonna be dealing with these tiny earring pieces. I've got some gold earring hardware here, some little uh, hoops, as well as dangly earrings and stud earring pieces. And then I've got some cutouts for our actual earrings. Most of this stuff came in a kit that I bought, which was very handy. I didn't love the clay that came with the kit, but I did love all of the pieces because it kind of gives me a good place to start if I've never actually done clay earrings. Um, we have a rolling pin right here, and I'm gonna show you another way that you can roll your clay out without using this rolling pin. That is super cool. Um, some E6000, you may or may not have to use this. I only had to use it like one time. Um, it's just gonna depend on the design of your earrings. These popsicle sticks are so that whenever you roll your pin over your clay, you're not making it too thin. Those came with the kit as well. I've got a couple other accent pieces for the jewelry and then some sandpaper, which we'll use later on and I will show you guys. And then we've got these tiny little cookie cutters to cut out our clay if you choose not to use your Cricut to cut your clay pieces. So whenever we started um, working with polymer clay and we were really wanting to like dive deep into this, I started out by purchasing a kit off of Amazon, which we do have linked below for you guys. Um, I wanted somewhere to start rather than just being like, oh, I want this clay, I want these tools. You know, it's just a good way um, for you to get started. So if you don't really know like a good starting point, I think purchasing the kit would be a really good spot for you to start. I would recommend purchasing the Sculpey clay with it as well. That way you do have that good quality clay. Sometimes the kits don't come with the best quality of clay and sometimes they don't come with a lot of clay. So that's just our recommendation if you were just now getting started and hopefully that helps you find a good place to get things going. Now that you have all of your supplies, you're probably thinking, what do I do next? Where do I start? How do I pick my colors? What designs do I wanna do? So what I have done um, is basically I pick out the colors that I want depending on if I'm making them for an occasion, like for the 4th of July, if you wanna make earrings, if you're making them for a wedding gift, kind of base your colors around either what the person that you're gifting it to would like, what the special occasion is, things like that. Um, I'm going to design some 4th of July earrings just so you guys can see like kind of the process of things. So I'll stick with a red, white, and blue color scheme, things like that. And I'm going to actually take a piece of coffee paper and just draw my designs before I actually go in and do them. That way I've got some kind of idea to go off of. So what we're gonna do first is start with some basic shapes. If you bought a kit, they may have already come with some shapes to cut out. Um, if you're gonna be using the Cricut to cut your shapes, try to stick with some basic Cricut shapes that are included with design space, such as half circles, arches, rectangles, stars, anything simple like that. We don't wanna to get too crazy with our base layer. We can put more detail into the colors we use and the designs that we choose, rather than putting a lot of detail into like the actual shape of our earrings. 
So what I'm gonna do first is pick my design and just draw it out and then go from there. So I'm just gonna start with a simple circle shape and you can make these dangly or you can put studs on the back of them. I think these would be really cute as dangly earrings. So I'm just gonna put a little J shape. Don't judge my drawing, it's fine. And then I think I'm gonna do a cute little arch shape because there is a basic shape in Design Space that looks like this and I use it all the time. I'm obsessed with the shape. And what I'll do here is add one of those little rings to connect them. And since we're doing 4th of July, I think what I'll do is like a red and white marbled arch. Just, I'm gonna combine red and white clay. I think that would be really cute. And then what about if we do like stars and lightning bolts up here? That sounds fun and exciting. I think that would be very cute. And so that would be my first design. So now I know everything that I'm gonna have to do. I know that I'm gonna need red and white clay. I'm gonna be doing a white base with a blue screen print for our stars and our lightning bolts. So I already know like my colors and all that. I know my shapes and I'm good to go. And then after we do these, I'll show you guys how we do each little detailed step. Now that we have our design finished, I wanna show you all a few ways that you can really elevate those designs um, using your Cricut. So the first one that I'm gonna be showing you all is how to screen print. So I've got this screen printing fabric right here it's like a mesh. Um, if you've ever used a screen print, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's kind of like a meshy material. You can get this on Amazon and it is linked below. And then I'm also gonna be using just plain white HTV. Really, you could use any color HTV. It's not gonna matter because we're just using this on our screen. And then you can see here, I have already cut out a pattern using this and I'm gonna show you guys how to do this as well. And then the next way that I wanna show you all is how to use our Mylar stencils. So right now I've got our Mylar right here. And if you've never cut Mylar, it's relatively easy to cut. It's just like a clear plastic film. Um, you can see in these how bendy they are. Um, but these are great for stencils and they're reusable. So that's awesome. The screen prints are reusable as well. So it's gonna be totally personal preference. Um, but the good thing about these is that you can actually add texture to your earrings. So you can put these on the clay and like push down and it actually gives the texture of the design. So that's pretty cool. The last thing that I wanna show you all, and this is probably my favorite thing that we discovered whenever we were playing around with polymer clay earrings, and that is how to cut the clay using your Cricut. So I'm actually using a Maker 3 for this. Um, you can use a regular maker. The Explorer doesn't use the knife blade, but what you can do, if you don't have a maker, if you don't have a Maker 3, you can always have your designs drawn onto like a piece of uh, freezer paper using a marker. Um, you could do it that way and just have your operation set onto the pin function if you wanted to do it that way and you can cut it out with like a true control knife. Um, it would get the same results basically. It may just take you a little bit longer. Um, but the way that we do it this way is by using freezer paper. We've got a strong grip mat, some painter's tape, and a knife blade. So this is just a super cool method if you do have a Maker or a Maker 3, we love the results that we get from this, and I think you guys are gonna love it too. The last thing I wanna talk to you all about in regards to clay earring making um, is to invest in a pasta maker. So this may seem like a weird thing um, to use, especially in crafting, um, but what this is great for is whenever you wanna flatten out your clay, rather than using that rolling pin and the popsicle stick situation, which works fine, don't get me wrong, um, but this is just so handy because all you do, you can roll up your clay, and mix whatever colors you want. This is great for like the marbled effect, um, which I'm gonna show you guys how to do. Uh, but roll it up and then kind of flatten it out and you just put it right through here and you literally just spin this and then it'll roll out the bottom here. I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys here in just a minute. Um, but this is just super handy if you're really gonna dive into polymer clay earrings. This flattens out your clay so fast and it's so even. It's just a really good handy tool to have. 
Okay, so to get started with screen printing, I am going to go ahead and just cut a portion of my HTV out. This doesn't have to be very big. We're working with earrings, so the space doesn't need to be gigantic. Um, I'll probably do like half of this, so I'm just going to cut this right in half. And I'm going to tape it shiny side down to my mat. So I'm just going to line this up right in the corner as if I were cutting any other HTV. And my edges are trying to come up. So y'all know I'm grabbing the trusty painter's tape. This is one of my favorite things to use whenever I'm putting things on my mats, especially if it doesn't want to stay stuck down. And I'm just going to tape all of my edges down so that it doesn't lift up whenever we go to cut our image. If you have a brayer or a burnishing tool, you can just run over that as well. That will help it stick. And then what we're going to do is hop into design space and I'm going to show you how you can choose a design to go onto your HTV. Okay, you guys, so once we're in design space, what I'm going to do is pull in a design. I chose the Bolts and Stars design from the Makers Gonna Learn website. I'm obsessed with this design. It is so cute. Um, but before you do anything, I want us to make a perfect square to cut out with our HTV. This is not really necessary. I think it just makes it cleaner. You're going to be reusing this stencil so it looks better. Um, but what you want to make sure, no matter what design that you choose, that you weld everything before you slice it. So everything right now is attached. And then I'm just going to click and drag. I'm going to weld it all together so it's like one image. And then I'm just going to take a square and... The square that I cut out of our HTV is a little bigger than five by five. So let's just do a five by five square to keep it simple. Just like that. And actually we can make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it 5.3 by 5.3. And then what you can do is make sure this is covering all the stars and bolts as much as it can. And then I'm going to click and drag and slice that out. So we won't need all of this. You can go ahead and delete all of this and you will just need this portion right here. And then you could go into make it. And if this was a text, we would want to mirror our image. And just for the sake of using HTV, I'm going to go ahead and mirror it so no one gets confused. And then I want to go ahead and select continue and select my Cricut device. And then we will go ahead and load our mat into our Cricut. After you've selected your maker, you're going to browse all materials and we're going to select everyday iron on right here. And you can also select heat transfer non Cricut, whatever setting you typically would use for your HTV. I'm going to keep my pressure at default, make sure my fine point blade is in, and we're going to go ahead and cut our design. So once everything's cut, I am going to go ahead and weed out the stars and the lightning bolts. And I want to keep the area around the stars and bolts. So I'm going to actually take out the star and bolt graphics. So just weed out all of these. And then after that's done, I'll show you guys what to do next. I'm just going to go ahead and trim up our design 
And then you can go ahead and get your iron, your mini press, whatever you're gonna do, use to attach your heat transfer vinyl. I go ahead and heat that up. And I'm also going to cut out a piece of our screen printing material. So as long as it's a little bit bigger than our HTV, we should be good. I'm also going to take off all any extra painter's tape. If you use painter's tape, make sure it's not stuck to your HTV. And then I'm just going to cut out a small sliver of this fabric. Now that I've got my HTV on top of my screen printing fabric, I'm just going to lay something to protect the screen print and the screen from adhering to the table. And then I'm just going to put a piece of copy paper over this so that we don't accidentally melt our uh, screen. I've just got this on the medium setting, so it's not going to be like too, too hot, but just to be careful. And then we're just going to iron right over top of this until it adheres to the screen printing fabric. And then just delicately remove your transfer and then you have made your first official screen. If you want, you can kind of trim up your edges, which I'm going to do just so we don't have a lot of extra fabric running around whenever we're dealing with paint. I'm just going to trim, trim, trim. Now that you all know how to screen print, I wanna show you how to make reusable stencils using Mylar. Um, this is super, super easy. Basically, we're just gonna pick out a pattern. You can do the stars and bolts pattern if you want to. The Makers Gonna Learn website has tons of really, really cute patterns that you can use. So I'm gonna show you guys the ones that I love, and then I'm gonna show you how to use them on the Cricut. What we'll do next is go to the Makers Gonna Learn website. If you are curious about our different patterns, we have an entire category dedicated to our patterns and they are so, so cute. I'm just gonna go into the cut files area and then right down here, we've got a pattern category and you can scroll down and be mindful that your earrings are gonna be very small. So when you're picking out your design, make sure that you're picking out something that is gonna translate well on a small area um, let's see right here. Like, I think this is very cute. Something that may not translate as well would be like a bigger pattern, like this fruit pattern. I don't know that that would look as good. Um, but this floral could be really cute. And I am actually, let's go to the next page and I'll show you the ones that I chose. Um, I did this imperfect chevron. It's very cute. The leafy stem also super cute. This mud cloth is amazing because you can use different sections of it. Um, and you also want to be mindful, like with this mandala, that would be amazing. But whenever you go to cut this out, all the middles of those little tiny mandalas are going to fall out. So you need to make sure you're picking a pattern that is going to actually like stick together, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and I think we'll go with this retro pattern today. I'm gonna go ahead and download this and pull it into Design Space. We are gonna be using the SVG for this. I'm just gonna select that and add it to my canvas. And then if you want, you can make your square again. We'll do like a five by five square and then we can add our pattern within it. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to the front. And if you don't want it to be super detailed, you can, the, the bigger, the less detail. So if you make it bigger, there's gonna be way less detail. I think we need to make it semi-small. So I am going to go ahead and just duplicate this and then duplicate it again and again. And you can line these up perfectly so that they are right in the center. And I'm gonna center them vertically. 
and then take all of the pattern parts and we're going to go ahead and attach those and weld them and then we can slice it out of this square. So we don't need this and we don't need this. So that would be our stencil right there. And then we'll go ahead and send our Mylar through the Cricut. I'm just gonna select Make It. And we're using the Maker for this as well. We don't need our stars right now. I'm gonna move this all the way over. You don't need to mirror it when you're doing the Mylar stencils. You can just go straight in. I'm gonna hit Browse All Materials and Mylar. We're gonna be using a fine point blade for this. I'm gonna go ahead and load my Mylar into my Cricut. Okay, so now that it's cut out, we're just gonna kind of lift this off of our mat very carefully. Just using this little spatula tool. And you may have to use your weeding tool to get out all the middles of these little half circles. This is a very detailed stencil, so just be super careful when you are pulling it off of your mat. And then most of the middles stuck to our mat when we pulled it off, which is great. It makes it super easy for us but this would be your reusable Mylar stencil. Pretty cool. Now that we've got everything designed, I wanna go ahead and show you guys how to use the pasta maker. This is such a fun part of this project. If you're not doing this, um, I will show you guys how to roll out the clay with the rolling pin and the popsicle sticks as well. Um, but if you are gonna be using the pasta maker and you want to go for that like marbled look, which I think I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna show you guys just how to do that. So I'm just gonna open these up and I'm gonna pull just like a portion of each off. And I was originally gonna do red and white, but I think I'm gonna add in a little bit of blue as well. Um, the clay does like to stick to your hands so the colors can transfer a little bit. So just be um, aware of that whenever you're making and mixing different colors. I just want a little bit of this blue and this is a shimmery blue, you guys. How cute is that? So before we start smashing all these colors together, you wanna really condition your clay. This is very important because we are gonna be putting this under heat. So we wanna make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And you wanna always start with your light colors and work your way down to your dark. I literally just put my hands on the red and you can already see that it's trying to transfer into my white a little bit, which is totally fine because I'm not going for a pure white. I'm actually gonna be adding this into the red. Um, but if you did want like a really white white, you're going to want to start with the white and then work your way down into the darker colors or wash your hands in between colors, whatever's going to work better for you. So I'm just going to keep kind of massaging out this um, clay and until it feels nice and soft and you'll be able to feel it whenever you're working with it. You can feel how much softer it gets and how much easier it is to work with. So you all can see once I started rolling the red, it's already trying to get onto my hands. So you can wear gloves really if you wanted to, if you don't want that. Um, we are always crafting around in here. So we've always got some sort of paint or dye on our hands. So I'm not super stressed about it. Um, but once you've got these clays worked to how you want them, what I'm gonna do is add in little chunks of the colors that I want and I'm just gonna kind of like fold them in. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of placing it on here. And I'm just gonna keep working that clay together just like that. You can add in as much or as little as you want. So it looks weird right now, but once we start rolling this through the pasta maker, you're gonna see the marbled effect and it's super cool. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is put my pasta maker on the edge of the counter. So let's bring this over here. Just gonna line it up there. And then we have a little clamp, looks like this. We're just going to want to tighten this down pretty good. We're not doing any aggressive pasta making today, so as long as it's on there tight enough so that it's not going to wiggle around, and then you'll put your handle in right here. Just make sure it's working, and then I'm going to take my clay, and I'm just going to kind of like flatten it out a little bit, and what I'm going to do, be very careful with your hands. I'm going to roll that through, and I'm going to catch it here on the bottom. And that was our first pass. So you can, how beautiful is that? You can keep passing it through until you get the desired look. I'll pass mine through a few times. And you can see that it keeps doing the marbled effect. And this clay is shimmery and it is so pretty. I love, love, love how this looks. So the more you blend it through, you have to be careful, especially with colors that mix, you may start pulling other colors. So like red and blue, if I mix it too much, it's gonna turn purple. Um, and if you don't have enough of a color, you can add in some more. So let's add in some more blue. So you guys can kind of see what happens whenever you decide if you wanna add in a few more colors. I'm just gonna kind of put these in here and fold it up. I think I just wanted a little bit more blue. We can add in some more white too. Just kind of mash it together. And then we're gonna send this through the pasta maker again, flatten it out a little bit and run it through. So we've still got this really marbled look. It's very pretty. I'm gonna run it through one more time. And there you go, that is our little slat of clay and we can actually cut our earrings out of this. Okay, so for our marbled clay, I'm actually just gonna be cutting out my solid shapes on that. So I think I'm gonna make another set of earrings and do some crazy colors and do our texture. So I wanna show you guys how you can use your Mylar stencil to actually put texture onto the clay. So I'm gonna pick like a fun color and roll that through the pasta maker and then show you guys how you can do it too. Now that the purple is rolled out, I want to use some of our stencils to do a pattern on here. So you can use these as like a paint stencil or you can use them more for just a texture. And what I like to do is kind of place this on here. So I'm just gonna place these popsicle sticks right here beside my clay. And I'm gonna take my rolling pin and just apply light pressure over top of my clay. This is gonna kind of indent that Mylar stencil into the clay. And then we just wanna be super careful whenever we pull it up. But this is gonna create that really nice texture. Once you feel like you've rolled over enough times, you're just gonna very delicately pull it up and you all should be able to see how beautiful this texture is. How stinking cute is that, you all? Can you guys see all of that beautiful texture? I love how these turned out and we're gonna be able to actually cut this with the Cricut. I can't wait to show you all. What we're gonna do next is roll out some of our clay the old school way. So we're gonna just roll this clay out using our popsicle sticks and our rolling pin. I wanna go ahead and work this up really well. That way it's nice and smooth. Then we're just gonna lay it right there. I kinda roll it up and then pat it. Mark it with a B. <laughs> and then I'm going to just take my rolling pin and very gently roll this out. I love this creamy color. We're gonna pair this with the purple. I think it's gonna look super cute. And the reason we use these popsicle sticks is so that we don't flatten our clay out to, to where it's too skinny. So these popsicle sticks help us with the depth of our clay. And you can move them up and down as you need. 
Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm gonna do is take that same stencil we used earlier and I'm just gonna kind of push this in so it sticks and it stays. And what I'm gonna do next is take some paint. I've got this mint paint right here and I'm just gonna put a little bit on a plate and we're going to paint over our Mylar stencil onto this tan clay. So you don't need a lot, don't need a lot of paint. I'm just gonna go in here with a little bit of paint and you can kind of wipe off the excess so you don't have a whole, whole bunch. And we're just gonna go in here and lightly paint on top of this stencil. So you don't want a lot because we don't want it to seep underneath the stencil. So just be super careful that everything is smoothed out. You could really even roll your rolling pin over top of it if you wanted to make sure it was really on there. We're just gonna do a couple light coats. So I wanted to mention that the screen printing and the Mylar stencils, they're very similar techniques. We just wanted to show you all both ways. That way, if you only have access to the Mylar, you can use that. If you've already got screen printing materials on hand, you could do it that way. Um, either way is gonna work well and they're gonna look really good. Um, so just use what you have on hand and kind of see where it takes you. Um, no technique is better than the other in my opinion. They give different effects, um, but the screen printing and the Mylar are gonna give you probably the most similar effects. So don't feel like you have to do both. You can just do either um, and kind of work with what you already have on hand. It's good to notice that with the Mylar, you're gonna be able to actually add texture to your clay opposed to the screen print where you would only be able to um, paint with on your clay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. How pretty is that, you guys? And you can go ahead and wash your stencil. That way the paint will stick to the stencil if I don't wash it almost right away. So I'm gonna go run this into the water and we'll be right back and we will cut out our clay. In order for us to go ahead and start screen printing, you're just gonna need our design that we made earlier. You're gonna need a rolled out piece of clay. I went ahead and rolled out some light blue a paint color of your choice. I just used um, regular acrylic paint for this. We just had some white and a paintbrush. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my stencil and I'm gonna put the HTV side down. So the screen printing material will actually be on top. And then I'm just gonna lay this on here and I'll take my brush and we're just gonna lightly go over top of this. Now, if you wanted to, you could take like an old credit card or an old gift card and you could put like a little strip of paint right here and just kind of slide it over as if you were doing an actual screen print. That's totally fine, um, whatever you're more comfortable with. This technique works for me. Um, I don't really have a lot of bleeding this way, um, but do whatever you feel more comfortable with. Just make sure that if you are using a paintbrush, you're not going in with a whole, whole bunch of paint. Otherwise it may seep underneath your screen print. And once you've got all the areas covered, we're just gonna pull up our screen. Now that we've completed the painting portion, we wanna make sure and let this paint dry before we actually go in to cut it with the Cricut. Um, if you're not gonna be cutting it with the Cricut and you are just gonna be using the cookie cutters, you can go ahead and cut them out as soon as your paint dries. But regardless, we want our paint to be completely dry before we start cutting anything. That way we're not messing up the pattern. We want a nice, clean cut around everything. So I'm gonna let these sit for a minute. I'm gonna go preheat my oven to 275. And then once that's preheated, um, after we get these cut, we will toss them in the oven. So these two, I'm actually gonna be cutting with the cookie cutters. I'm gonna be cutting two rainbows out of this and two of these ovals out of the star and thunderbolt. So I'm just gonna take my cookie cutter and make sure you've got the, sh the sharper side down. You can kind of tell like there's a little lip right here. And what I'm gonna do is just push this right into my clay. 
And I've got this on freezer paper just so it doesn't stick to the table as bad. And make sure you really, really push it down. And then when you pull it up, it may do that. And I just like to take my finger and very, very delicately push that out. Just like this. So there's one. And you can see where my fingernail got that edge, which we can sand it after we pull it out of the oven to smooth it out. And then I'm just going to do another one right here. Push really firmly and very, very delicately push this out. There's our other one. Those are so cute. And then I'm going to take our oval and we're going to be cutting out our stars and lightning bolts. And I kind of want my lightning bolts going at an angle, but my circle is going to be going straight up and down. So I'm going to cut this at an angle slightly. And you can kind of look down in there to see where exactly you want to place it. I want to make sure you can see a full star and a full lightning bolt. So I'm just going to place that one there. Make sure you've got your sharper edge down. And then I'll do one right over here. And try to make sure you're not going off the edge anywhere. There we have it. We've got our four cutout shapes. How cute are those, you guys? And then now I'm going to show you all how you can cut out your polymer clay earrings with the Cricut. So I went ahead and cut out a piece of freezer paper, and I'm actually going to trim this down a little bit because we're not cutting anything that big. I'm just going to cut this right in half, and we're going to actually need two whole pieces. We're going to need one for the bottom layer and then one to go on top. I'm just trimming these down so they're not so bulky. So we'll have the shiny side up and then you can take some painter's tape and make sure that this is really stuck down there. I am using a strong grit mat so it's pretty sticky. Um, but I'm just going to add some additional tape just for reinforcement. And this is something else I want to add. I didn't do it initially, but I want to show you all. This is going to make it a lot easier. So if you can see your numbers up here on this top edge, whenever we actually go to cut these in design space, you can line up the designs that you're going to be cutting out on your clay through your design space. So I want to lay my red on here and I'm going to do this one tall. So I'm going to line it up to this furthest edge and you can see that it comes right here between the three and the four mark. So I just need to be aware of where I'm placing my cutouts in design space so that my design doesn't cut off of the edge of the clay, if that makes any sense. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this green and tan and I'm going to line this one up about the four and a half mark. So this furthest edge is right near the four and a half mark. And then I'm just going to lay that back down. And you want to kind of make sure those are stuck to the mat. Once you've got your clay down, we're going to take just like some kind of measuring tool and measure the general width and length of our clay pieces. The shapes are kind of wonky, so I like to do it in like the general area. So like I'm just going to measure out about this wide and this tall, if that makes sense. And then here I'm just going to measure out about this wide and then that wide. So this is going to be about four inches by let's say three and a quarter and you can write that down if you can't remember it so this one will be four and three and a quarter and this one will be I don't know four and like two and three quarters and I'm gonna place shiny side down this time on top of these and I am going to put tape all the way around the edges of this as well. Once you've got it taped down, we're gonna go ahead and hop into design space and choose the shapes that we wanna use for this specific clay. 
So with the measurements that we took of the clay earlier, we're gonna just plug in some squares that are those exact measurements. So this is gonna be my red piece of clay and the measurements for this one were four by three and a quarter. And you can unlock your box so you get the exact size. And then for the tan and green one, I am gonna plug in another one that is four by two and three quarters. Again, you can unlock your box, two and three quarters. And then this will be our tan one. We'll just make that tan. And then what we're gonna do is pick our shapes. So earlier we designed our 4th of July earrings and I said I wanted to do an arch shape. So this is one of the basic shapes that you get when you download Design Space. And I just want to plug two of those in and they need to fit within this square right here because we don't want to go any bigger and we really don't want to stretch it all the way like we don't want to go all the way to the edges just because we have such a wonky shape of clay now technically before you put your clay on the mat if you wanted to square it off you could and it may make it easier for you to cut that's totally personal preference um, otherwise we can just kind of put these in here and we should be good to go. Make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of these as well. So like my clay on my mat is more up and down, so it's taller than it is wide. So I'm gonna wanna make sure and rotate this entire thing 90 degrees because I know that my slat of clay is gonna be longer. So just make sure that you've got these right in here. And we could make them a little bit bigger, but I'm just, I don't wanna make it too, too big. Um, we could maybe inch them up just a little bit because we're at like one and a half width by 3.6 tall. I think that this looks good. So we're just gonna keep it there. And then for the other one, what I'm gonna do are these little half circles so I'm just gonna pull two of these in. And you can just duplicate that. And I am gonna make these, let's do one by two. Okay, and then you can, technically, you could just delete out these squares. We don't really need those. What I am gonna do is attach these shapes so that they are together when we actually go to make it. So what I'll do is select make it. And then you, this is where you wanna remember where you actually placed your clay on your mat. Now, some of you may have access to snap mat. Um, if you know how to use the snap mat feature, this is a great opportunity for you to try that out. Um, otherwise, we wanna go ahead and line up our shapes to where our clay would be on the mat. Once you're here, you wanna make sure that you are lining up your shapes in order of where they are on your Cricut mat. So if we go overhead, um, I'm just gonna double check where I've placed mine because I don't wanna be too off. And you can just kind of pull up your freezer paper and see where your measurements are. You could write these down before you started. That might make things easier. Um, but I can see that my far edge is right up to the edge of the mat and it comes out to like in the middle of the three. So back in design space, my little arches, I want them to be lined up here and I do not want them going any further than the three and a half mark, which is right here. And this is already gonna tell me that these half circles are way too far over. So let's just scoot those out of the way. And I'm gonna scooch this just a little bit over. I feel like this is a happy area and then I'm just gonna scooch these down just a hair because I have an arch on the top of my clay. So you just kind of have to refer back to your clay and how it's placed and all that. And then for my other ones, if we go overhead, you can see that this one is kind of lined up with the four and then it ends in between the seven and a half. So what I'm gonna do, I don't want it to be all the way over to the four. I want it to kind of sit right in the middle of my clay. So I'm gonna pull it down and I don't want it to go any further than seven and a half. 
So I feel like this is a good happy spot and it's gonna cut right in the middle of my clay. You can use bigger slabs of clay if that makes you feel better. Um, but I just wanted to um, work with what we had and I feel like we're just making a couple sets of earrings right now so we didn't want to roll out like a whole ton of clay but honestly if you had like much more clay you could lay this whole thing out and you could cut a lot more on one mat so just wanted you guys to know that and be aware um, but if you are just wanting to make a couple earrings really quick this is the perfect way to do it go ahead and connect to your machine and once we get in here, our cut settings are going to be a little bit weird. So we wanted to find a base material that was using the knife blade. So what we decided to do was go with tooling leather. And I just used on the 2.4 setting. And it's going to want to calibrate your knife, which we've already done. And then I'm just going to go ahead and install my knife blade. So I'm just going to take this one out and we're going to slide our knife blade right in. And then you can take your clay and we're just going to slide this right in here and go ahead and start it. Once you've removed the top layer of freezer paper and everything has been cut out, we're just going to go ahead and remove this outer edge of clay just very, very carefully. If you have any edges that are trying to stick, go ahead and grab a true control knife and that will help you to make sure that your edges stay super smooth. So I'm just going to be super careful here. And then I'll have a couple rough spots and we can go back in with a true control knife or an X-Acto knife and fix those up. And then we want to just very delicately remove the freezer paper from the front and back of all of these. Once you've peeled the paper off of all of your clay pieces, we're just going to go ahead and place them on a piece of parchment paper on top of a tin cooking sheet. So this is just like a little cookie sheet and I'm going to put all of my earrings on here a little bit spaced out. The size is not going to change on these so it's not like you have to space them out like you would cookies or something like that. Um, but we just want to give them enough space to heat up. And these are our two designs that we have here. And what you want to do before you bake or anything like that is add in where you're going to need holes. So you're going to need holes that connect all of the little pieces. Like I'm going to need one at the tops of these and at the bottom of that area. And then I can either put a stud on the back of these so I wouldn't have to put a hole or I can put a hole at the top and they can be dangly. And then same goes for here. I'm going to need holes at the top and then one in the middle. And these can be studs or danglies as well. Totally up to you. It depends on your design and all of that. And then just make sure you're cleaned up all of your edges. And then we will throw these in the oven at 275 degrees for 15 minutes. I'm going to be using a straight uh, weeding tool to cut the holes in my earrings. So just be super careful when you're doing this. I'm just going to go all the way through and then pull it right back out. You want to make sure they are big enough so that the hoops go through them and so they can actually connect. And also make sure that they're close enough to the edge that they connect and they've got room to kind of dangle around. So I've been sitting here looking at these designs and I really love my 4th of July earrings. Um, I'm just not feeling these little domes with this purple. I totally thought it was going to be cute and now I'm just thinking, eh, I'm not really into that. I can bake these still and I could add on um, some other things if I wanted to in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and add holes to these just in case, but I'm not going to actually attach them to my purple earrings. I just don't feel like they would be that cute, um, but I do think that these would be cute with something else. I just don't think that they're going well together. So I'm going to go ahead and put the holes in these and I can save them for later and attach something else to them. And then these I'm just going to turn into dangle earrings, which I think would be super cute. I love this color, especially for summertime. 
and we're just going to slide that off of there very, very carefully. Now I'm going to go throw these in the oven. Now that our earrings have been baked, I just pulled them off of the baking sheet and I'm going to take this sandpaper and kind of sand down any rough edges and you can kind of tear this into smaller increments so it's easier to handle. But I'm just going to sand down all of this until everything is super smooth. I will say that these are hardened now. They're a little bit bendy. Um, I mean, you'd have to literally bend them hard to snap them, but they feel very sturdy and they're hard enough to where they like, they're not gonna look warped or anything like that. So I think that those turned out really good. Again, this is the Sculpey 3 clay that we're using here and it just works really well for what we're doing. Um, the Sculpey Slew Flay does work a little bit better if you would like to try that type of clay out. I linked all of these below so you guys can kind of try out whatever you think is gonna work best for you. And then once you're done, just clean your area off and we're gonna go ahead and start applying our jewelry hardware to our earrings. So you're gonna need your jewelry hardware and you're gonna need a pair of small needle nose pliers. And what we'll do is start with these and I'm just gonna show you all how I add these in. I'm just doing the dangly earrings for this one. So I'm gonna be using these right here as well as one of those per earring. So you can do this either way, whatever is easier for you. Um, you can connect it to the actual other earring hardware if you want, just like that, and then run it through the earring, or you can do it the other way around. Um, this is just what works best for me. After you all install your hardware, you are good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed learning this today. I just wanna reiterate that if you are just starting and this is the first time you've ever made polymer clay earrings, I don't want you to be discouraged if it doesn't work the first time. Um, it is a lot of trial and error. We kind of tried to streamline it for you all so it's a little bit easier, um, but don't give up if you don't do it perfectly the first time. There are lots of different techniques and ways that you can go with the polymer clay earrings. So don't be scared to start over again if you don't do it perfectly the first time. If you all like the patterns that we use today, make sure to check us out online at makersgonnalearn.com. We are a membership site where you will find thousands of cut files and hundreds of fonts. We would love for you to be a part of our community. We offer monthly and yearly subscriptions. And on top of that, we offer education, motivation, and inspiration to use your Cricut. I hope you all enjoyed this craft and I will see you all next time. Bye.